All right, everyone, we start off today with another unfortunate I told you so video, which is in Afghanistan's not looking too stable at the moment. Dozens of different strategic points have already been overrun by the Taliban. Um, this is a problem because keep in mind, under the initial withdrawal deal, if we had stayed with it and not, you know, vexed these people, it would have been, I think, difficult for the Taliban to have any sort of camaraderie or cooperation from the tribal leaders that are so important outside of the urban areas there, like basically <laughs> Kabul and two or three other cities, that's it. Uh, in the outlying areas, it's, it's very tribal, and then you've got the Taliban sort of loosely associating. Under the initial deal, the tribal groups were relatively happy with the deal. What Biden did is he pushed the date back several months because he wanted to have the 9-11 bravado. And what's going to happen, I believe now, is Afghanistan will fall uh, and he will blame Trump. Now, first and foremost, before I get into the wherefores and why nots of how this would happen, uh, there will be a pinned comment down below if you're watching this video on YouTube. Keep in mind, I make two, sometimes three videos a day on YouTube, but there are always two videos a day that don't go on the platform. They go on all of these others. Mainly that's for algorithm purposes at this point. Now, here's the problem. Can the Afghan government stand up to the Taliban? Yeah, potentially. Can it do that without any form of cooperation from all of the tribal forces in the outlying areas where the Taliban prefers to operate? No, I can't, because it'll never be able to win against the Taliban. The Taliban, at some point, all they'd have to do is overrun a major base in Kabul or something, and they'd basically control the country. Afghanistan, the problem is the Taliban, by default, wins as well with its particular strategies just by throttling the movement of goods around in some of those rural areas. There's your economy. If you strangulate the economy and people start to have problems, they're not going to blame the Taliban. They're going to blame the U.S.-backed pawn government there. This wouldn't have been a problem if we just uh, held with the withdrawal, but here's what Biden will do. If Afghanistan falls, as increasingly it looks like it may do, and the U.S. is literally going back on part of the withdrawal deal and saying, well, maybe we'll stick around uh, for the purposes of conducting s drone strikes for the Afghan government. Well, okay, so we're not really even leaving. So Biden has basically done a 180 on the whole situation, but here's how he would blame Trump. He'll come out, if this happens, if it falls to the Taliban, as again, I suspect it may very well do so, and it's very sad, and basically a complete capitulation to stupidity. If that happens, he'll say, well, man, I wouldn't have brokered the initial withdrawal date. We'd still be there, and we'd be protecting Kabul, and, we, and things wouldn't have flown out of hand. But I had no choice because Trump brokered a deal. Now, I tried the best that I could to make lemons into lemonade. I pushed the date back. I kept a contingency a little longer to prepare the Afghans a little bit more. I did everything that I could, but it was Trump's deal in the first place that stunk. It was his deal that caused the problems. Now, that will be a lie. The Taliban didn't care to overrun the Afghan government because we had, we had made an agreement and we were going to stick to it assuming Trump had Hong Kong won re-election, but he totally lost in a historical landslide and all that bullshit. Uh, <laughs> if that had happened, um, there'd be no real reason that, that the Taliban wouldn't be able to go to the tribal warlords and say, look, the evil imperialist U.S. doesn't want to leave. But that's what they're doing now. That's why they're more emboldened. They're saying, look, it's Uncle Sam up to his same shenanigans all over again. We got this agreement. They were going to withdraw. The Taliban would be working loosely with the government as well as with the outlying areas and their tribal warlords. And it would be, I mean, it wouldn't be stable. It wouldn't be prosperous, but it's better than civil war. Now you've got a situation where, unfortunately, that's probably impossible. I'd be surprised if the Afghan government lasts a year once we leave. It'd be really funny if on 9-11 the Taliban does basically like a Tet Offensive sort of thing and just crushes the government of Afghanistan in a 24-hour period. You've got to realize there are members of the Afghan government that would, that would flip it in a heartbeat. Oh, I can, I can keep my head and join the Taliban and they'll let me have a position here. All I have to do is basically do what they say. Or I can get shot or, or have my heart cut out or something. Hmm, I wonder which they're going to choose. There are probably already uh, uh, subversives in the Afghan government undermining it from within now. They're probably already there. What, is, what, what possible effort could we make to stop it? Trump set a withdrawal date. It was all set and ready to go. Finally, we get to fucking leave Afghanistan. Biden pushes it back and then says, well, maybe we'll leave a few more forces for a little while longer. Maybe we'll keep conducting drone strikes. So there's no end to the war. Why? By the way... And I'm not supporting the Taliban, so before someone jumps down my throat, but 
Can you really blame him for being upset about the fact that the U.S. is still going to maintain a military presence there, albeit without troops on the ground? I know that the tribal warlords certainly don't like it, because something like two-thirds to three-quarters of all of the casualties of our drone strikes are civilians, they're not even combatants. The Pentagon had a report about that several years ago. <laughs> and in fact, I think it might have been like 2015 they issued that report. It was a long time ago. Uh, I can't imagine the methodology is any better now. But when you splatter a bunch of people's kids and grandmas and shit like that, when you accidentally target the orphanage, don't you think that that makes terrorist recruiting easier? You know, we, 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 look, you look on TV or something like that, and you'll see like, oh, ISIS beheaded 15 people today. You go on the internet, you see like ISIS beheadings and shit like that. What you don't see typically presented is all of the splattered orphans over in some desert somewhere that were killed by a drone strike from Uncle Sam. They're seeing a different reality from what we're seeing. And their reality shows them, hey, you know, they always say the Taliban is so bad, but my nephew and two of my cousins and my grandpa, it, it was a drone strike that killed them. Red, white, and blue, star-spangled drone strike. Really patriotic. It was wonderful. And, and these days, it's a progressive bomb of tolerance and diversity with a rainbow flag on the front and a BLM logo stapled to the side. Which is, I, I wish that were hyperbolic, but it seems to be a trend in the military at this point to give bombs cutesy-sounding uh, asexual names. <laughs> Non-binary, it's a they-them bomb. They, ide they identify as a flying object that explodes. Uh, Biden will be the person responsible for the fall of Afghanistan if it occurs. His bungling, his, his, his complete 180 on the diplomacy that was already set and ready to go, where the Afghan government would have at least some, some capability of dealing with the Taliban. There'd be some stability there. Because the Taliban wouldn't be able to wander around in the steppe and openly recruit anymore. It was, it, was, it was a good arrangement, and leaving Afghanistan completely is the right thing to do. It's not our country, it's not our battle. Osama died long ago of kidney failure, and there's nothing to be done about it. Instead, Biden decided to do what he usually does best and fuck things up, but he will turn around and blame Trump. Watch. If Afghanistan falls, one of the first things that he'll say, and he'll do, he'll, he'll do a live presser probably for this, well, man, yeah, Trump boxed me in. Maybe he did it on purpose, he'll insinuate. It was something, something subversive and malevolent. It did, did it for Putin or something. He'll make that excuse. I was boxed in. The withdrawal was already set. I couldn't say no to the withdrawal because, you know, that wouldn't work. People wouldn't like it here. People wouldn't like it there. So I just moved it back, and I tried to salvage the situation, but it didn't work. Corn Pop was a subversive. Just watch. Wait and see if I'm not correct if Afghanistan falls. That's about all. Peace out.